In this Java tutorial, we are going to learn about traversing a one-dimensional array. Before watching this video, you are going to want to understand the basics of an array in Java. For more information on that, please click on the link in the upper right hand corner of this screen. Some important facts to know. Arrays in Java and most languages start at index 0. That means the first index will actually be index 0. Dot length will return the number of indexes in an array. Since the indexes start at index 0, that means an array of size 5 will have indexes 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. You can traverse an array with a for loop or a for each loop. Let's start writing some code. Here we're declaring an array x and setting it equal to 2158. And here we can see the reference variable x on the stack and the array on the heap. Now let's write some code to traverse it with a for loop. Before watching this, you'll want to be familiar with how a for loop works. For more information on this, please click on the link in the upper right hand corner of the screen. So we see we're starting by declaring our counter variable int i and setting it equal to zero. We're going to continue the loop as long as i is less than x dot length. So in this case, x dot length is going to return four because this array has a size of four. At the end of each loop, we're going to increment i by 1. i++ plus plus is short for i equals i plus 1. Inside the loop, we're going to print out x index i and then a space so all the numbers don't run together. So let's trace this out. We'll start by declaring i and setting it equal to 0 and that gets placed on the stack. Now we're going to check is i less than x dot length. So 0 is less than 4, so this is true. We continue along with the loop. Then we print out x index 0, which is the number 2, and a space. We get to the end of the loop, so we increment i to 1. So now i equals 1, and we're going to be looking at index 1 on the array. We check, is i less than x dot length? 1 is less than 4, so we continue. We print out x index i, index i is 1, so we print out the number 1, which is an index 1, and then a space. Get to the end of the loop, increment i by 1, now i equals 2. We check is i still less than the length of the array, it is, so we continue the loop. We print out x index 2, which is 5, and then a space. Now we increment i to 3. We check is 3 less than the length of x, which is 4, so that's true. We print out x index 3, which is the number 8, and then a space. We increment i to 4. We check is 4 less than the length of the array, so is 4 less than 4. It is false, so we terminate the loop. So now we've gone through the loop and we've printed out the contents of the array. Now let's look at some modifications we can make to the for loop. Here we're incrementing by 2 instead of 1. So every time we get to the end of the for loop, we set i equal to i plus 2. So i'll start out at 0, go to 2, and then go to 4. Let's look at another modification. We could start out our counter i at 1. So we'd start by printing out index 1 and then continue on like that. Another modification we could make to this code is instead of printing out the data, we could modify the data. So here we're taking the data inside x index i, multiplying it by 2, and taking the product and returning it back into x index i. So if we ran this code, it would go through the array and double the data inside each index. Now let's look at a way to traverse the array using a for each loop. You can see a for each loop has two parts. The first part is a temporary variable. I named mine t. The temporary variable has to be of the data type that's inside the array. So since this is an array of ints, I've made my temporary variable an int. Then we have a colon, and then we have the name of the array, in this case x. A for each loop will go through one time for each index in an array. 
each time it goes through, the temporary variable will hold the value inside each of the indexes. So the first time through, t will hold 2, the second time through, it'll hold 1, and so on. So let's trace this out. We start by declaring t and setting it equal to the value inside index 0, so t equals 2. Now we're going to print off t and a space. Now we'll move t to index 1, so t will hold the number 1. Then we'll print off the value of t, which is 1. We'll go through again. t will take out the value 5. Then we print off the value of t. Our last time through, t will pull out the value 8. Then we'll print off the value t. There are some limitations to the for each loop. With the for loop, we could skip certain indexes, but a for each loop will go through all of the indexes in the array. Also, in a for loop, we're able to modify the data inside the indexes, and we can't do that with a for each loop. While a for each loop can be easier to use, its limitations mean it might not be appropriate in certain circumstances. For further reading, type Array Java Tutorial Oracle into the Google search engine and choose the first result. Otherwise, you can type this web address into your address bar. To see the next video in the sequence, please click on the link in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. To see the entire curriculum, please click on the link in the lower right-hand corner of the screen.